Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So I'm resuming our verse-by-verse -verse commentary on the book of Revelation. Because of the shelter at place, I'm not able to use the whiteboard. The other videos that you saw, that was before the shelter at place took effect, and those were old videos. Okay, so let's continue on our topic concerning about the false prophet in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 11. As I mentioned before, one of the most interesting figures to me, to me, was the false prophet because he's very mysterious. One of the things that I mentioned is over here concerning about being like a lamb. So remember what the Bible says about false prophets. If you look up every term that talks about false prophet, it's very interesting. It mentioned that they are wolves dressed up in sheep's clothing. So we see over here like a lamb at verse 11. So because of that, the false prophet is always typified in the Bible as, remember, being appearing as innocent like a lamb, as well as speaking great swelling words, positive words that deceive the people, like Joel Osteen. Billy Graham, uh, I take it for granted that he's a safe person and going to heaven. If some of you believe he's lost, then he's lost too. But the point is, is that uh, Billy Graham, he definitely had a lot of political connections. Uh, I know that he had a gospel mindset, and I'm happy for that, but, you know, you don't compromise with sin to give the gospel. So, anyway, besides all that, the point is, is the false prophet is a great speaker like those false ministers. Now, if you notice over here, it says he spake as a dragon. So, remember the Antichrist, when we looked at the previous verses over here, that in verse 5, the Antichrist was given him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And then you'll notice that he received such power from the dragon himself. If you look at the previous text at verse 2, the dragon gave him power and great authority. So Satan, just like a serpent tongue, was able to seduce Eve with great effective words. The Antichrist will do that as well, as well as the false prophet. So that's what we noticed so far. I encourage you to look up every verse that says false prophet in the Bible, and you can see some very interesting things, and you probably can come up with your own theories on that if you were to do it. Okay, now let's continue on. One of the things about the false prophet which is very interesting to me is that it is very possible he may be resurrected. Now, that's not really spoken about end times uh, prophecies. Uh, a lot of people will talk about the Antichrist being resurrected from the dead. But it is very possible the false prophet can too. You might say, why? Well, notice right here in verse 11 about the false prophet. And I beheld another beast, where? Coming up out of the earth. Now remember, like, the Antichrist came up from the pit of hell uh, and came down upon the earth this false prophet is going to come up from below hell as well and come upon the earth. Now, remember Revelation chapter 9 about these mutants or these demonic creatures that came from hell and Apollyon from below. So a lot of demonic activity, demonic creatures are coming out of hell to meet the people on the earth. Now, the thing is this, is that the false prophet is undoubtedly going to come out of hell below and then land upon the earth. If he's going to be like the Antichrist does and being resurrected, that is very possible. Uh, I cannot prove that 100%, but it can be very possible, and I'll tell you what, that will be very interesting. So anyways, if we look over here at verse 11, it says, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. So meaning that this is uh, the same thing like the Antichrist, the beast, from verses 1 and onward, who comes up. But he comes up out of the sea, which is interesting. So I mentioned about the Mediterranean region. And then the false prophet, he comes up out of the earth from the ground. So anyways, the thing is, is that it shows right here there maybe a similar pattern that the false prophet is imitating the Antichrist, so that's why the possibility is open he could be a resurrected being as well. 
Another interesting thing about the false prophet, which is why I keep saying he's such an interesting person over here. There's a lot of things uh, that you can notice. It says, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And then you'll notice in verse 12, so we mention a lot on verse 11, verse by verse, word for word, especially in my previous video. So I'm not going to do it here, okay? All right, verse 12, I'll try to explain each and every word now. And he exercised it. So he's performing, he's operating, that's exercising, functioning, all the power of the first beast before him. So he's going to carry on the powers of the first beast before him. That's the Antichrist, remember, from the previous verses. So he's going to be carrying on his powers. Now, the false prophet is going to have the exact same powers as the Antichrist. And notice over here it says power of the first beast, what? Before him. This is why one of the points and arguments that is made is that the false prophet is not the Pope. Now, uh, there are people who comment on my channel, which I can allow, that who insist that the Pope is the false prophet, not the Antichrist, because I always allow that possibility. There are some Bible-believing preachers who believe that as well. However, um, there's this one thing that kind of is like a little hurdle, which I would like an answer for. So, like I said, I'm always open. But I'm prone to lean toward the fact the Pope is the Antichrist, and the false prophet is not the Pope, because it says here that the false prophet exercises the first beast before him. See that? So this Antichrist comes out before the false prophet. You notice that? So the false prophet does not come out until much later. That's something you want to notice. So this Antichrist was long before the false prophet. All right, so keep that in mind. Now, wait a minute. If the false prophet is the Pope, weren't there popes always throughout the past 2,000 years of history? See that? So that's something to think about. So if the Pope is going to be the false prophet, it doesn't seem to match because there are always popes before. But um, let me carry on with the interesting two passages, which I always found interesting. 1 John 2 and 2 Thessalonians 2. So let's look at that. Let's look at 1 John 2 and 2 Thessalonians 2. All right, now these are two key chapters talking about the Antichrist. This is one key thing you want to understand about the Antichrist, which is why I lean more toward him being the Pope. It makes more sense. And then the false prophet, what, he comes out later, see? So it doesn't make sense that he would be a Pope, because Popes have always been here. Yeah, some people insist it's Pope Francis, but the Antichrist is supposed to come before that, see? But anyways, aside from that fact, 1 John 2 says that there are already many Antichrists, and these are like unofficial versions of the Antichrist that they're already here, these unofficial versions of Antichrist, but that the official Antichrist would eventually come. This can perfectly match with Roman kings, Roman powers during John's time. John's time, we can apply Roman kings here, as secular Roman power transitioned to religious Roman power, and those were popes. That's undoubtable in history where ancient Rome transformed into the Roman Catholic Church. That's an undoubtable historical fact. So if we were to carry on the idea about the Roman power during John's time, which John said that those Antichrists were here now, and that eventually it will make way for the Antichrist, see, it shows that it makes more sense that there were already unofficial Antichrist popes, but then the official Antichrist, who is the, the pope, is going to come out. The Second Thessalonians 2 mentioned that uh, mystery of iniquity is already here. See, the unofficial version of the Antichrist, but that the man of sin, the official version of the Antichrist, is not yet revealed. So during Paul's time at Second Thessalonians 2, if we were to apply that to Roman powers currently to his time, that would make so much sense because popes and Roman powers have always carried on 
uh, ever since Paul's time to today, and even to the future tribulation, because Revelation 17 talks about that the Roman Catholic Church, Babylon, will be showing up, which I will expound more later on. But let's look at these verses. So I already gave the explanation, and uh, I'll give the verses to explain. Verse 18, little children, it is the last time. And as have he... And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come, the official one. But during John's time, up till the real Antichrist, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. See that? Okay, so let's also look at 2 Thessalonians 2. This makes so much sense if you say this is Roman power. Because Roman power is the only thing that can fit the bill that would go from early ancient history of Paul and John's time all the way to today and to the tribulation. It makes so much more sense. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Notice over here at verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. See the Antichrist, he's already here. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. But then look at verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. The official version of the Antichrist. Okay, so now let's go back to Revelation chapter 13. False prophets, very interesting figure. The next thing I want to mention is that if you look back at Revelation chapter 13 about the false prophet, notice the beginning part. He exerciseth all the power of the first beast. Okay, so he's exercising, carrying on the power of the first beast. Think about within the Godhead about hmm, which uh, person carried on the power, exercised the power of Jesus Christ in his stead and his position. That's the Holy Spirit. If you read John chapter 14, 15, and 16, it talks about, Jesus says that in my place, the Holy Spirit will carry on the power. So the false prophet is a perfect example of imitating the Holy Spirit. And as I mentioned before in previous videos, the Antichrist would perfectly imitate God the Son, Jesus Christ. Where he raises himself from the dead and he's given dominion by his father, the devil, the dragon. Just like Jesus Christ is given dominion and power from his Father, of the Father up in heaven. Okay, so we can see the satanic trinity at work. Let's see. Notice the begin, uh, middle of verse 12. And causes the earth and them that which dwell therein. So he causes everyone in the earth and people who live on the earth to what? Worship the first beast. So his job is to pave the way for the Antichrist and make sure that they worship him. Wait a minute. Paving the way for this Christ, make sure they worship him. Do you know someone like that in the Bible? Yeah, John the Baptist, you got it right. So the false prophet, you can see right here, he's like John the Baptist, which Jesus called the greatest of all prophets. Mm -hmm. So they want this person, this false prophet, to come out who would be like the greatest of the prophets, so to speak, imitating the false prophet, just like John the Baptist. Now, if you hear that term, the greatest of all prophets, you would show right here that what two religions would brag about being the greatest of all prophets? There's Islam, Muhammad, being the greatest among all prophets, Mormonism. Joseph Smith, the greatest among all prophets. I'm not sure about Seventh-day Adventists, but they probably consider Ellen G. White as the greatest of all prophets. See, so notice this is some sort of religious minister role. Popes are known as what? Popes are known as Christ. They're actually known as Christ on the earth, so to speak, according to catechism. So that fits a lot more with the Antichrist bill. It fits more with the Antichrist bill, I see that. Whereas um, the false prophet would be something as more of a minister figure. I see that more and more. Okay, notice right here, he gets all the people in the world to worship the Antichrist whose deadly wound was healed. Okay, so remember the first beast, which is the Antichrist, he 
he had a wound that was deadly. It killed him, but then it was healed. So proving that, oh, I am Jesus Christ, says the Antichrist.